Hey, how's it going everybody? Lewis here. Uh, today we're going to show you a really neat finishing schedule. I had some uh, a really cool gray color and uh, you know sometimes we have really nice colors left over in the cup especially if we're shooting a uh, 2k poly. Um, it's going to go in the trash anyway since it's a catalyzed product and uh, might as well use it to do a sample. So I'm just randomly doing a distressed uh, distress glaze panel. We're going to distress this panel just a little bit and I'm going to use just random tools that I have around the shop. Do a little bit of wormhole, um, you know, some little distress marks and just a variety of things. So um, we'll just get started. So I, I start out with the rock and again guys, anything you can find, it's not rocket science. We're just trying to uh, distress this panel. I'm gonna get a rasp here, and I can actually even use that rock sometimes to sh to kind of rough up those edges. Cause we don't want it to look, you know, um, new. We want this to look like a natural aged finish. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is sand this panel. Um, I'm going to use my Surf Prep uh, three by four. This is not the electric version, this is the air version. It's also available in electric. Um, I'm using the air just because it's convenient for me to grab it while I'm in the shop. Um, I'm gonna use the five millimeter coarse pad for the initial sand on this panel. Now, of course, what we really like about these uh, surf prep abrasive foam pads, and I'm sorry, this is actually a 10 millimeter uh, pad, not the five. I have a five right here. Uh, but these these foam pads, they really contour to these panels so that we can sand them really, really well. Even on our edge profile. So, you can tell, when you look when you look at that sander, you can see how that pad is. And without breaking the edges or doing anything like that, we get a good result. Now, I really want to round off these edges, so I'm going to use our film abrasive. Um, just because I really, this distress finish, I really want to cut those edges down. So I'm going to use the um, five millimeter interface pad on the foam abrasive. That way it's not too sharp and I can kind of flatten all these corners out. You know, when we're doing a distressed panel, we definitely don't want real sharp edges. That's not going to give us that look that we're going for on distress. So we want those corners to look kind of rounded off. I'm going to distress these edges just a couple more. All right, so as you can tell, that panel is very distressed. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using a 2K Apollo, uh, I'm sorry, a 2K acrylic polyurethane for my base color. 
Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to prime this panel with the 2K Poly Primer that I've tinted um, black since we're going to be using a dark color. Okay, so we've got the panel all blown off clean and ready to prime. Um, I'm going to be using a DeVilvis Techno Pro Light 1.4 fluid tip on this, uh, spraying about 25 pounds of pressure. So we're just going to lay down one good primer coat, and since this is getting a glaze, we're going to do our base coat, a powder glaze, and a top coat. So we're going to do one coat of uh, primer. Um, really liking the way it's turning out so far. Um, you can tell we're getting a lot of detail on that. I'm using this 24 inch surf prep uh, LED inspection light here. Um, that's really going to highlight all of the little details um, on the panel that I need to see. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take our surf prep surf flex. It's a four by four and a half by five. Um, foam backed abrasive and we're going to give it a light scuff sand. Now guys if you're enjoying this video so far do me a huge favor please and uh, like the video and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can keep uh, updated on all of the uh, really neat stuff that we're going to be doing in the future. Um, we have a lot of really really neat projects coming up for you and uh, this is just one example of them. Um, and also, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you want to see. Um, I am I, I am capable of re recreating um, any type of finish that you show me. So um, we really want to hear from you and see what you think and um, what finishes you want to see. Okay, so I'm going to get this to the booth and we're going to shoot our coat of uh, 2K Poly. Um, and uh, and then it'll be time to powder glaze, so stay with us. Coat um, of 2K Poly on there. Uh, you can really see the distressing. Now once we glaze this panel is when the true beauty of this finishing schedule is really going to show up. Okay, everybody, so now we're going to get to the powder glazing part of uh, this panel. And, um, you know, powder glaze, if you're not familiar with it, it is a very neat product to work with. Um, not only is it a little bit faster, um, it also gives a really, really neat look uh, when it comes to some of these distressed or glazed finishes. So um, when we're using powder glaze, I want to go ahead and lightly scuff sand the surface area. Uh, just to have that powder glaze have something to bind to. So again, we're going to go to our Surf Flex abrasive. This is a 220 grit, um, and I'm just going to light sand the panel to get it ready for the powder glaze. And once I start applying that powder glaze, I'll come in a little bit closer with that camera so that you can actually see the application process. Um, the way I'm going to do it today, I do spray powder glaze a lot. Um, but I'm going to put it on with a brush. Um, I know a lot of people have asked me a lot of questions about can the product be brushed. Yes, absolutely the product can be brushed. So uh, it's a water-based product and um, it's, it's fairly easy to work with. Um, you know, it might take you a couple of times. I see a lot of folks have struggled with it um, when they are uh, using different type of products, not necessarily industrial wood coatings. Um, my guess is you probably need to let that coating dry a little bit better, or maybe it's not the best product to use. You want something that has a fairly decent film build to it. Um, if the coating is you know, kind of porous, um, I, you might not get the best results out of it. All right, so literally all I'm gonna do going to wipe it off. Um, I've already stirred up my black powder glaze that I'm going to use on this panel and I'm just going to brush it on there. No particular order that I'm going for. I just want to make sure that we cover the entire panel. I'm going to use a Surflex um, non-woven pad to remove this 
and we'll see what we end up with. Um, this glaze, I'm not going to leave it on too, too heavy. I'm going to start dry brushing it, basically, just to take off some of that excess. I don't want a whole bunch of it. with a finish like this um, you know this is more of a furniture finish honestly it's a multi-step finish a finish like this is going to be pretty hard to replicate over and over and over again um, especially if you're in a small shop or maybe you're doing it in the customer's house um, anything like that so you know this is a good upsell for those of you that are painters or cabinet refinishers, DIYers, um, maybe this is a good finish for you to do on like an island. And uh, you know, that's not so much surface area to work with, so it's a little bit easier. Now, as you can tell, that powder glaze is already starting to dry, and I'm just kind of dry brushing it out. Um, when we go in different directions like that, it gives us a really, really neat look. I'm actually surprised at how fast it's drying right now, but I guess since I'm wiping it and um, taking a lot of that material off, it makes sense. So I'm going to leave it like that and give it about five minutes to dry uh, thoroughly and then we'll take it off. All right, so the powder glaze is completely dry now. Um, I've got the light on. I want to be able to see what we're looking like. And with these colors being very similar, we're really not going to notice the effect of the powder glaze until we take and spray our clear coat on it. Uh, but I'm going to use our Surf Prep non-woven pad with the 5 millimeter interface. And I'm going to take that powder glaze off. And I've got the pressure turned way down. Now again, with that Surf Prep sander, I can kind of offset my non-woven pad here and I can get in all these little details. Now, um, I was looking at it, and I think I'm just going to do a very, very light rub through on some of these uh, corners. Nothing crazy, just enough to uh, give it a little bit more character. Okay everybody, so this is always the neatest part of using a powder glaze product. So I've got the camera zoomed way in. We're going to shoot our clear coat and it's going to reveal how that powder glaze looks. Okay, everybody, thanks so much for watching the video. A big thank you to Surf Prep Sanding for allowing us to do these videos. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the page and hit that bell to get notifications of all the upcoming projects we have. Uh, make sure you go over to the webpage www.surfprepsanding.com, and uh, we'll see you next time.